I will wager that most of you all know exactly where we are. That's Cemetery Hill at Gettysburg. East Cemetery Hill is off to the right. We'll talk about that in a sec. This is the Evergreen Cemetery with the Soldiers National Cemetery off to its left. And this is the Baltimore Pike, the busy Baltimore Pike. And it was busy during the battle as well um, as two, three, four Union Corps, depending on how you count it, use this key artery to get to Gettysburg. It is one of only two roads the Union Army had available to it uh, on the second and third day of the battle after the fighting really started. And that's why the battle was fought at Gettysburg, because of the roads, not because of shoes, as most of you all already know. Um, so this was really key. You've got tens of thousands of Union soldiers marching along the Baltimore Pike and going by the first property we're trying to preserve and this one right here, which during the battle was the farm of James McKnight. James McKnight had lived here for some time before uh, the armies came and forever um, changed uh, his life and the life of the town at Gettysburg. Um, there are original portions of his home. This is an outbuilding here, and you can st still see the original stone portion back there. And um, there was a wooden structure here at the time that has been altered. I'll wager that the lots of the foundation is actually original as well. And let me show you what we're really trying to do here because, you know, East Cemetery Hill, which you can see right over here, was one of the first, was the first place preserved at Gettysburg for a park. It is the first Civil War battlefield park, four acres right beyond the statue of Winfield Scott Hancock over there. And all of East Cemetery Hill was able eventually preserved, but not the land I'm standing on right now, not this land here. So when the Union soldiers occupied Cemetery Hill on the afternoon of July 1st, 1863, and then held that position with a pretty weak line over near land that we have preserved. That's right, you and the members of the American Battlefield Trust um, have preserved right near that light blue water tower over there uh, where we own the woods to the right of it and an acre beyond it as well. That's where the Union line was, but the Union line bends back along the base of this road over here and then where some Massachusetts soldiers are positioned right over here. The Southerners, uh, Louisianians over there and North Carolinians over here in the twilight on July 2nd, 1863, make a furious attack, punch through the Union line, capture the crest for a time of East Cemetery Hill, but eventually get pushed back from Union reinforcements. That's the story of the Battle of Gettysburg, the 33rd uh, Massachusetts were pushed hard and some of their soldiers were buried on James McKnight's farm um, right beyond uh, that modern house over there that, uh, that is not part of this deal um, you would be able to see Stevens Knoll Greenleaf T Stevens's guns um, were actually moved we think along the McKnight Lane in order to get out towards Stevens Knoll actually you can see a part of Stevens Knoll right over there and then um, we think some of his caissons might have been below the hill in this general vicinity as well. But here's what we're talking about here is this acre along... Uh yeah, uh, the Baltimore Pike, the James McKnight House and outbuildings here in some of the land. Um, another track that you can see right over there in the distance that'll help us to add to the substantial acreage you have helped us preserve along the Baltimore Pike. We mean across from the uh, NPS Visitor Center. We mean um, over at Powers Hill. We mean across from Powers Hill at the uh, mini golf course as well. This key artery then and now needs to be preserved. We need to prevent further development here. And yet that's not all. We have a much larger track far to the south and I'm going to pick up this video over there. I'm now standing on the other tract we are trying to save right at the base of Big Round Top, which is right off in that direction. I'm on the western side of the property, right where Plum Run borders it on the edge. And there was stuff going on on July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and even 4th um, here on and around the Battle of Gettysburg. Let me or orient you here. The Tawny Town Road is off in that direction, just a couple of hundred yards. I'll do my best to illustrate this as I do the video. Um, and you got a Union 2nd Corps, uh, the elements of which are coming on the night of July 1st and the morning of July 2nd, marching up the Tawny Town Road enjoying that beautiful view. It must have been pretty then, and I know it's pretty now to come into Gettysburg from the south. You can view the round tops from there. Uh, famously, or much more famously, on the uh, afternoon of July 2nd, you have William C. Oates's Alabamians coming from Seminary Ridge over there. And as they march up Big Round Top, their right flank comes just a couple hundred yards away from the edge of this tract over there as they go up Big Round Top, down the other side, and off to fight Union soldiers, namely the 20th Maine on Little Round Top. After the 20th Maine and others repulsed the Confederate attack, the Alabamians and the Texans, they fall back and the Union occupies Big Round Top uh, uh, on the night of the 2nd. On the morning of the 3rd, the Union further strengthens it and then establishes a uh, Union line of battle, Vermont.
Vermonters mainly, with some cannons on what is now called Wright Avenue. And those Vermonters established a skirmish line forward on this tract right here. Um, on July 4th, 18, I'm sorry, later on July 3rd, 1863, Union soldiers are going to go all around this property in order to reach South Cavalry Battlefield. This is before and after Pickett's Charge on the 3rd. And there's going to be all sorts of fighting just around there. And then finally, on July 4th, when the Union um, is looking to see where the Confederate positions are, uh, one Vermont regiment, I think it's the 4th Vermont, comes on across this tract, suffering a couple of casualties along the way as they go off to look for the Confederates, who they found have begun to further consolidate their lines preparatory for their falling back from Gettysburg. Um, you know, now, while this is all happening on the 3rd and even on to the 4th, apparently when you're wounded, you get dehydrated, you crawl to a water source, and many said that the waters of Plum Run ran so red that it was actually known as Bloody Run. And some of that blood, north and south, no doubt, flowed down toward this tract. Um, we have a good match for this. Uh, we're very concerned that the latest plans for this tract actually include um, large plot uh, uh, homes that could include those McMansions that might be visible on that beautiful view from the south. So we really hope you can get involved. We hope we don't even have to contemplate this. Share this with your friends. If you're able to help, um, go ahead and thank you no matter what for supporting battlefield preservation.